Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, today we're going to look at one of the questions requested by uh, one of my students. Okay, now uh, this question relates to applications of the um, integrations and area under the uh, the curve itself. Right. Okay, let's read through the question. Now here we are given um, a graph uh, that is represented by this function y equal to one over uh, x to about 3. Uh, the uh, restriction set on the domain will be um, the x must be lying between uh, 1 and n, uh, where the n is an integer number. All right. Now, a set of n minus 1 rectangles of unit width, okay, which means uh, one unit of width, is drawn under the curve, as you can see from the diagram on the right. Okay. Now, the first question. Okay. Now, write down the sum of areas of rectangles um, underneath the curve. Okay, here you can see that we have uh, generally one, two, two plus one rectangles, so they are uh, generally three. But what they are saying is, if you have infinitely, if you have infinitely many tr uh, rectangles that you can draw under the curve, okay. And so on and so forth. Okay. Now, what would be the sum of all the area for these rectangles that you can draw under the curve here? Right. So, starting from um, n equal to one, two, three until n here. Right. So that is quite um, simple. Now, first of all, uh, the width of this rectangle is uh, one unit. So this is uh, width equal to one unit. Uh, each one of them has a width of one unit. All right, so it's a uniform width uh, rectangle in this case. Okay, now the sum of the area of rectangles. So let's uh, try to work this out. So I'm going to write down what we need to do. Sum of areas of rectangle. Oops, I missed my C there. Okay, so the sum of areas or tangle, uh, we can construct that uh, area pieces by pieces here. So we're going to start from uh, this rectangle, for instance, uh, this uh, rectangle A, for instance. So rectangle A is given by, uh, now you have to know the width, uh, sorry, the width has already been uh, given. Now we have to know the height of this uh, rect uh, rectangle, right? So the height is actually given by, uh, this value here, uh, we can actually let, <coughs> so in this case, you can actually let your fx uh, equal to 1 over x cubed, for instance. In order to obtain the height of this rectangle, all you need to do is just uh, substitute uh, 2, x equal to 2 into the functions there. Right? And then uh, for the next one, uh, the height is given by uh, f3 and so on and so forth. All right. Now we're going to look at this. So that will be uh, one unit long, uh, sorry, one unit width, and then the height is given by F2. And then after that, the second one is also the same, uh, one unit width, and then the height is given by F3. And then we are going to continue this uh, process until we can sum up all the rectangles until the last rectangle um, that has a height given by Fn here. Okay, so we're going to sum this up until the last rectangle, which is given by this. Okay, so I hope that is clear. Now from here, all you need to do is just substitute the x value into here. That will be uh, 1 over 2 to the power 3 plus 1 over 3 to the power 3 and so on and so forth, of course, until the last one. Uh, here there is n, so n to the power of 3. There. Now that's how we represent the sum of areas of all the rectangles that we can draw under the curve here. Right? Now you can represent it explicitly in this form, or you could represent it in uh, summation notation. So for instance, in this case, I can use the summation notation. Um, using, uh, using okay, take for instance, starting from i uh, equal to 2 until n. 
So I'm going to sum uh, the rectangle starting from the rectangle with the height of uh, F2 until the last rectangle with the height of Fn here. Right. So I'm going to say that I'm going to sum up all these rectangle, um, letting the i starting from 2 here. Now the all the height for the rectangles can be represented as um, i to the power of 3 here. So it's starting off from i equal to 2, i equal to 3, i equal to 4, and so on and so forth until uh, we reach the last rectangle, uh, which is when i is equal to n here. Okay, right? <clears throat> I think uh, since this is a rectangle, okay, maybe it's best uh, up to your liking. Maybe it's best if I represent this as r, it will be easier. Okay, so maybe I change my notation here, r to the power 3 then. Okay, and then there you have it. You can represent uh, the sum of all the rectangles under the curve here using this summation notation. Uh, bear in mind uh, that r actually starts from 2 because uh, we start from here. All right. <clears throat> okay, I hope that is clear at this point. Now, other than that, uh, if you wish to include the 1, if you include... Uh, would like to include the one in your summations. For instance, uh, some of you might be wondering, can I rewrite my summation notations instead of starting from two? Can I say that I want to start uh, from uh, one instead? Sorry. Uh, can I do it from one or not? Uh, for sure you can. Right? Do you know why? Because every one of you are number one. Okay. So we can start from number one. So if you start from number one here, uh, basically, what we are looking at is you might want to draw another rectangle uh, just before that rectangle A here uh, that has a height F equal to 1 here. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, we can say that we want to sum up the first rectangle here. Uh, maybe I call it rectangle P. Uh, rectangle P until the last uh, rectangle, so until N here. And then I'm also using the same uh, rule or functions here, r to the power of 3. Okay. Now, uh, bear in mind if I change my uh, sum from the first triangle P until the end here, uh, this would uh, no longer be the same as this summation. Now, how can I make these new notations uh, so that its summation is the same then? So, therefore, here I need to subtract off. Since I sum up all the area of rectangles starting from here until here, right? therefore, uh, the sum of all the rectangles starting from A until here uh, will be given by, uh, you just need to subtract off the first uh, area of the rectangle, which is uh, basically F1. And then you can rewrite that as R starting from 1 until N. And then uh, F1 basically is 1 there. Okay, so now we can conclude that. I'm going to write down the conclusion so that you can see what I'm trying to do here. Uh, this is just extra uh, discovery that I have um, stumbled on in this, uh, in this case. Right? It's not really what the question wanted. I have already fully uh, answered the question in this case. Uh, the area is given by this, or you can represent it in the form of summation notation. Okay, so this is the discovery that I have um, obtained. Okay, I know that this is given by this one here. N one over R three minus one, or I could have uh, written it in another uh, from another perspective. For instance, I can actually rewrite this as I can say that starting the sum of all the rectangles starting from r equal to one is the same as plus a one here. All right. So I hope that is clear for the first question. All right. Now let's take a look at the second one, and then um, let's see how do we actually apply integrations. Um, to relate that to our uh, uh, summation notation, right? So stay tuned for the second question. All right. Now the second question, um, hence, show that uh, this summation is actually less than 
1.5 okay now I'd like to recap uh, what we have obtained in our previous uh, question number one there we have obtained this relationship so the sum of this is actually equal to uh, this sum here right <clears throat> now we get to uh, look at what is the relationship between this summation notation and the integrations uh, that represent area under the curve there right <clears throat> okay now I'm going to do it uh, slowly uh, for the area under the graph okay so take for instance uh, this integration here if I uh, wish to integrate from 1 until n for instance for this particular uh, function okay all right now what does that actually mean uh, that typically means if I wish to obtain the area under the graph from here until uh, until here okay let's try to work this out uh, now this integration is quite easy to integrate in this case so basically that is just um, 1 over uh, 2x2 then uh, let me check whether I got it right okay sorry I think I messed this up it's supposed to be um, negative 2 over x2 uh, this should be correct Okay, all right. <clears throat> so that will be a um, let's see negative two over negative two. Did I got it correct? It's supposed to be x negative two over negative two. Oh, okay. I think I messed up again. Okay, let me correct that. Uh, it's supposed to be like this. Okay, hold on. Just let me correct that. It's supposed to be one over two x to the power two. All right. So, yep, that is the uh, the result of our integrations for these uh, functions here. Right. <clears throat> okay, so if you're happy with this, all you need to do is just substitute the n, uh, x equal to n, and then x equal to 1 here. Uh, therefore, we have uh, 1 over 2 n squared plus uh, 1 over 2 there. Now, of course, uh, you can always... Um, factorize this for instance okay for me I would prefer to factorize this as a 1 over n square okay and then there you have it right <clears throat> now that is what we have at this point right? okay now we're gonna look at what is the relationship between this integration here uh, this integration here uh, with the summations that we are uh, actually getting in this case right <clears throat> okay now you can see that uh, our integrations uh, started off from uh, 1 until n. So that is the green area there. Okay. Now this green area definitely is larger. So we say that from here, uh, this area, this area, uh, this integration represents the area. So this area is much more larger than the sum of all the rectangles underneath uh, this green area which is actually given by uh, this summation here uh, we know that uh, we started off from 2 until n 1 over r3 okay now that's what we uh, have okay you can see that and then this is the same as uh, from here this is the same as 1 over r3 subtract 1 from the same relationship here right <clears throat> and then therefore we can um, restructure this a bit we have already found out uh, the result that we have obtained for our integrations therefore we can conclude that uh, 1 over r3 the summations of this Uh, must be less than okay I changed the perspective a bit must be less than uh, whatever summations that we have obtained here all right so I hope uh, you are clear with this okay I did not change anything here I merely substitute this section into here let me show you what I did I sh substitute into here and then uh, this section I just put it onto my left hand side 
Uh, so this is the inequality relationship between the summation and the integration. Okay, and then uh, finally, of course, if you like, uh, you can touch up a bit before we finalize. Okay, so we know that this one must be less than. So I can move my 1 over there. So therefore, I get 3 over 2. Okay, so 3 over 2 uh, minus 1 over 2 n squared. Right now, that's what I have. Okay, so I hope that is clear. And then this result is very, very important for us to uh, finalize uh, the proof for this. Right. Okay, I'm going to pause here for a while uh, so that you can organize your thoughts. And then I'm going to summarize the, uh, the proof for this. All right. All right, okay, if you are ready, I'm going to show you uh, what it looks like. Uh, in terms of proving the last part, right? So I'm going to take uh, take this result that I have obtained here. I'm going to say that in order to prove this, uh, the sum from r equal to one until infinity is actually the same as applying limits to n when n uh, is getting larger and larger for this summation. Okay, for this summation. <clears throat> okay, and then uh, I know that these limits here must be less than the same limits that I'm going to apply to my left-hand expression, okay? which is 3 over 2 minus 1 over 2 n squared here. Now, this is directly from here. Okay. Right? Now, what will happen to n as n getting larger and larger? Of course, uh, in this case, my denominator would get uh, very um, big. Therefore, these fractions would um, tend to converge to zero. Therefore, I can conclude that. Uh, therefore, I can conclude that the summation of r equal to one until infinity, one over r cubed here, must be less than. 3 over 2. Uh, hence, uh, that is the proof for this section here. All right. Now, I hope that is uh, clear. Um, do try to uh, practice uh, doing more sketching on your graph. And then, uh, if you could, uh, do present your answer using limits. Uh, don't just uh, jump directly into the conclusions with the infinity. Right? Uh, this is a more formal way of uh, proving this uh, summation here, right? Now I hope uh, that will be a clear explanation uh, to you guys. Uh, if you like what you are looking at, again, uh, don't forget to subscribe and then uh, press the notifications bell to receive the latest video. All right? Thank you very much for watching. Uh, there will be more videos to come, right? Until I see you guys again, uh, take care, everyone.